In 2001, I was four and a half years old, and the very first movie that my parents ever took me to see was Atlantis, The Lost Empire. It was just about the most exciting thing that I've ever experienced in my life up to that point, and my brother was two, and he fell asleep after eating popcorn off of the floor of the theater. Okay, so. Tab Murphy is a writer, director, and producer. You might recognize some of his films. He was a writer for The Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, Brother Bear, Tarzan, and of course, Atlantis, The Lost Empire. Okay, you say, he's a writer, cool, but why him? The general public doesn't care about other screenwriters, and that's probably true. The names Jennifer Lee, Irene Mecki, Jonathan Roberts, Linda Wolverton, Stephanie Folsom, and Andrew Stanton probably don't sound familiar. And those are the screenwriting credits for some of Disney's most commercially successful films ever. It's not even that two or three of those are just new movies. I mean, you would not recognize the screenwriting credits for most of your childhood films. I promise you can go check. So why does the internet love Tab Murphy? Well, let's talk about memes. Okay, you're gonna have to pardon my language here, but there's a specific type of meme that we have to talk about called shitposting. The concept of shitposting and its definition have been widely debated and have even been associated with um, politics. But for the sake of this video, shitposting is going to mean intentionally low quality or low effort content, usually following a meme format. Shitposting comes in many forms on many platforms, but today we're going to be talking about Facebook. I know, ugh, Facebook, get off the internet, boomer. Without going into the history or the psychology of memeing children's or nostalgic content, uh, there are many, many Facebook groups dedicated to shitposting children's or nostalgic content from the 90s or 2000s. For example, we have Barbie Mattel posting, Anastasia, memes upon a December, Road to El Dorado, gold posting, and Emperor's New Glove. <laughs> and Emperor's New Groove Llama Posting. These are all very popular groups. Some of these even have spin-off groups, most of which are LGBT plus safe spaces after the main group turns out to be toxic, or they're backup groups for when the main group gets zucked, which is an internet slang term for being removed from Facebook for violating the community standards. The pandemic saw a huge influx of people joining these groups or the creation of new groups as people were stuck inside spending an inordinate amount of time on the internet, myself included. So one of the largest of these nostalgic shit posting groups is called Atlantis, the Lost Empire posting, which has 28,000 members. This is massive for a shit posting group as most of these groups just top out at around a thousand members. So on April 11th, 2020, Tab Murphy joins Atlantis, the Lost Empire posting and posts this. Now, if you've been on the internet for more than 10 minutes, you know that it's very difficult to interact with the creator of a thing that you like, especially if that thing is really big and really popular, especially on Facebook, which is geared towards a more uh, personal and private online experience, as opposed to Twitter, where anybody can say anything to anyone at any time. Also, a lot of creators are detached from fandom. Sometimes it's the age gap between the younger fans' sense of humor uh, being very confusing to older creators. Sometimes it's just that the creators are too famous or too busy to interact with fans at a personal level beyond the autograph table or a Q&A panel at Comic-Con. So seeing the writer for Atlantis pop up in the shitposting group was very interesting. His post got well over a thousand reactions. People in the comments were amazed, saying things like, thank you so much, you created my childhood, things of that nature. He also liked and heart reacted every single comment. The next day he posted a video saying that he read every comment and how happy he was that this movie had such a fan base. He also said that he'd post something very cool very soon. Well, he must have discovered a master list of these shitposting groups because within the next few days he joined uh, Memes of Notre Dame, which is a shitposting group dedicated to Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame. Uh, he also joined Brother Bear Totem posting and Tarzan Vine posting. He kept up with his promise to post cool stuff too. He posted fun facts about characters, early drafts of scripts, scrapped storylines and titles, backstories to characters that didn't get them in the movies, etc. A lot of really cool stuff. He quickly adapted to the uh, culture of this group, and on April 16th, 2020, he posted his first meme. A very appropriate meme, I might add. On April 20th, he posted a meme saying, how do I tell these people I'm almost out of cool shit to post? Both memes were very well received by the community. I think his engagement with the meme culture and rhetoric is most evident in his uh, Notre Dame 
memes where he just dunks on Frollo. When he did, in fact, run out of cool shit to post, he just switched to posting memes. I love how he makes all his memes in Adobe Spark. He also responded to comments and sent out posters. Oh yeah, in the last year, he sent out hundreds, if not thousands of signed posters to fans all over the world. This became like a meme in itself. Like, is Tab going to choose me to send a poster? It was like the opposite of the Hunger Games. I never got one, but I also never asked him for one because I hate feeling like I'm bothering someone, especially if they made a thing that I really enjoy. He spent his own money shipping these posters around the country and across the world. He also sent and accepted friend requests from fans until Facebook capped him out at 5,000 friends. He was such a staple of the shit posting groups that he eventually got his own group called Tab Murphy Scarf Posting. It was created on May 19th, 2020 and eventually changed its name to Movies Magic and Mayhem Posting upon Tab's request. Fans have even taken to calling him Uncle Tab. A few other creators and names attached to popular uh, fandoms and franchises have appeared on Facebook to interact and contribute to the fan culture. For example, Greg Baldwin, who voices Uncle Iroh after the first season of Avatar The Last Airbender, is a cosplayer and is in several Avatar fan groups on Facebook. He also voices Fontaine in Bioshock, but he's not in any Bioshock fan groups. But nobody has engaged with the fans on a personal level like the way Tab Murphy has. I think it was also just a really perfect storm. Atlantis is a 20 year old franchise that hasn't gotten a lot of attention since it came out. And The Hunchback of Notre Dame is a very uh, mature film, much more so than most other Disney films. Both films have almost a cult following now as the people who saw them as kids are now adults and can engage with the content and the media they consume at a mostly mature level. Tab is also a writer and is able to fly under the radar of uber fame, unlike say actors who are the faces or voices of the characters. But he's really made his presence known and his presence felt and has given fans more content of the thing that they so desperately crave. And he's a genuinely nice guy. He cares about the fan base. He's humble and very grateful for his fans. The Tab Murphy story is especially notable as people, both creators and fans, learn to navigate parasocial relationships in a world where technology makes everyone accessible all the time. If you'd like to get more information on this topic, Sarah Zed has two great videos about just that. Anyway, this is a shorter video, but I felt like it was a story worth telling. So thank you, Uncle Tab. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, you can subscribe. And a special thank you to Josh Ferguson, my first ever patron on Patreon. My Patreon link is in the description if you'd like to check that out. Thank you again. Also, I hope everyone's having a happy Pride Month. Quick self-promo, I sell Pride Flag stickers both in stained glass window and ice cream form on my Redbubble store if you'd like a more uh, discreet way to show off your pride. I have a ton of different flags and I want everyone to feel seen, so if you don't see your flag, please shoot me a message and I'll be more than happy to make one just for you.